Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY video here aboard good old Athena. I've spent the last couple of years getting started on a somewhat extensive refit. The end goal is for my girlfriend Ava and I to move aboard in around two years and then start cruising the world. But before that can happen, as you can see, I've got a few loose ends to tie up. Last weekend I reinforced the frame around a hatch here in the cockpit. A few days ago I was able to back out the screws that are used to hold everything in place while the epoxy cured. And this is what I'm left with now. This thing is rock solid, but a little bit rough around the edges. Fortunately it's nothing a bit of sanding and some fairing compound won't take care of. That to me looks ready for some fairing compound. I am however going to hold off on doing that until it is a little bit cooler in here. To be precise it is a sweltering 37 degrees celsius, that's the ambient temperature here, that's around 100 fahrenheit if I'm not mistaken. And to me that is very warm, so uh, in order to not mess that up I think I'm gonna just hold off on mixing fairing compound for just a couple of days. Over the last couple of weeks I've been scouring the interwebs for new cleats for Athena and these are two of the options I've shown you guys. I think I might finally have found my perfect cleats. Ta-da! As you can see they are a slightly different model than the two previous cleats I've shown you. So what do I like about these? Well I like the fact that I'll have half the number of holes in the bag. I also like the fact that these are larger than the first cleat I considered and the new ones here should also be easier to clean around because they don't have the wide base of the older type I was considering. Well, slight hiccup here, these don't appear to be the ones I ordered. The ones I ordered were 33 centimeters, so 3 centimeters larger than these ones. I'll reach out to the web shop where I purchased those cleats to see if we can't correct that little mistake. Now, what I also like about that new type of cleat is the fact that they're almost half the cost at 40 euros a pop compared to this one. I think this new type of cleat is a clear winner, but uh, I look forward to hearing what you guys think down in the comment section. Now, I know someone is probably going to point out that these look a little scrawny compared to the old type, but uh, I've looked around the marina and all the boats I looked at had this type of cleat. I'm sure with a generous backing plate that new type of cleat is going to be just fine. Now if you're new to my channel it might seem odd that I'm spending time at this stage figuring out what deck hardware to get. The reason for that is quite simple. Later this summer I'm going to be applying Kiwi Grip as a nun skip to the entire boat and before I can do that I need to figure out where to mount the deck hardware. Speaking of hardware I've got something here I think is kind of nifty. It is a 3D printed piece of tow rail. Here aboard Athena the tow rail serves multiple purposes. For one it covers up the deck hull joint which is otherwise kind of unseemly and the tow rail also serves as attachment points for all kinds of stuff. There isn't just one type of tow rail, they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. And this one is the best I've been able to find so far. It's the closest match to what I want and it's also the most affordable one. Of course the real tow rail is not going to be 3D printed, it's going to be an extruded aluminum profile. And when I say affordable this is still going to run me somewhere around 1500 US dollars. But that's pretty good considering that the closest alternative I've found to this was 5500 US dollars. I know from previous experience that someone is probably going to suggest that I glass over the deck hull joint and go without a tow rail or that I use a piece of teak instead or that I build a tow rail out of insert some kind of material here but I am going to stick with the aluminum profile. There are multiple reasons for that decision. For one it's going to be the fastest thing for me to do and I am a little bit pressed for time. And I also like the idea of having a lot of attachment points along the deck hull joint. Although this piece doesn't show it, the tow rail has a hole for every I think it's 15 centimeters. With a slight trimming of the bottom and top skin of the deck, which is what sits here on top of the hull, I think I should be able to use this profile. I know someone is going to bring up the old tow rail, the one I removed last summer and say oh why don't you just refurbish that. 
Well, sadly, it is too far gone. It would be more expensive for me to refurbish that and buy new stanchion bases for that tow rail than it is to buy the new tow rail. So yeah, I'm gonna stick with this. I know the first five minutes of this video has been a lot of yammering on, but hopefully tomorrow when I come back, it's gonna be a little bit cooler in here and I can get busy doing some actual work. But for now, I'm gonna do the old 23 skidoo and get out of here before all that's left of me is a big pile of melted mess. Well, it is still blistering hot here in my little easy bake oven, but there is a bit of prep work I desperately wanna take care of before the weekend. The last little bit of tricky fiberglass work I have to take care of here aboard the boat has to do with this hole here in the cockpit. This is where some of the engine controls are located. More precisely, they are located inside one of these doohickeys. Last week when reinforcing this, I also got rid of this flange because I much prefer this cleaner look. The same basically goes for this doohickey. I'm not particularly fond of this flange out here and it's only there so that they could secure this with screws. If I can glass this in place, then I could have the sides be nice and flush. I still need to figure out exactly how I'm going to do that, but a good first step would be to patch this giant hole. I have two of these to choose from, but this one has two giant holes, whereas this one just has one giant hole and a smaller one, so I think I'm gonna go with this one. I'm gonna go ahead and call this at the very least clean enough that I can go ahead and patch up the two holes. This is not very thick, it's around three millimeters. There are lots of tiny holes here I need to fix along with the two slightly larger ones. The back of this is only gonna be visible inside of a locker. So what I think I'm gonna do is just to add a layer of glass to the back of this. But before I do that, I'm gonna bevel all of the holes here, including these tiny ones from screws. After a tiny bit of glorious, glorious sanding and a quick wipe down, this is now ready for fiberglass. Let's see how this goes. The drapability of this 450 gram biaxial is pretty good, but uh, I'm excited to see if I can get this to conform to the shape. I think this looks pretty good, but I do have a little bit of a problem area back here. I cut the top layer of fiberglass a little short, so I'm gonna have some pokey bits here, but that's okay. I can easily sand those off once the epoxy has cured. I've decided to try a little bit of a Hail Mary here and slap some peel ply on this to see if I can contain those little short fibers, but uh, we'll see how this turns out tomorrow. And just like that, tomorrow is today. There are no pokey bits and I would say overall this looks pretty decent. Before I laid up glass on the back of this I used a bit of masking tape and some plastic to cover up the holes. The big hole here is a little large to do something like that. I am expecting to see the new laminate in behind here sagging a little bit but that's okay. Let's see if I got away with it. It looks like all of the new laminate here is underneath the top of this surface and that's good news because that means I just need to sand this and then I'm ready to apply some fairing compound. I am gonna have to go over these holes just one more time, but that's okay, I can easily do that even when this is glassed in place. 
Let's put this aside for now and take a closer look at where this is going to get mounted. The good news is that for the most part this is just all nice flat laminate. Access is going to be a little bit difficult and then there is this thing. I can access the hole here from the cockpit locker where I am now and that's great for this side over here. And the other side I can access from what is today the starboard aft cabin. Although access in here would be a lot better if I removed that piece of plywood. I've had a closer look and with the way this thing is secured it's going to be a little bit of a destructive process. There! Like I said, slightly destructive. But now I've got almost unhindered access to this area. That should come in very useful. Before anybody starts screaming down in the comment section about blah, 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 you could have removed the screws and blah 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 reuse and stuff like that, this area is going to get turned into a technical area. This is where the dive compressor and the diesel generator are going to live. So this entire area is going to get redesigned. So that's why I did it the brute force way. There is still the matter of this, but I think I can go ahead and trim a few centimeters off of this and that's not going to be an issue. I've got enough room in here all the way around this now to get some fiberglass onto this and really tie it into the boat. So now let's use this piece, which is just garbage, to figure out how I need to trim the other piece, the piece that I've patched the holes in so that it'll fit on the inside of this. 25 times 32.5. I'm thinking I'm gonna give myself about a centimeter around the edge here, trim off the rest, and then adhere it in place with some thickened epoxy on that one centimeter flange. And then once that is cured, I can go ahead and lay up glass on the inside. Wow, look at all this weight optimization. Never you mind all the glass I'm gonna be adding to the back of this. Yeah. I think this is gonna work out great. And look at it, it looks so much better with this being flush without that big flange on there. Good morning guys. Yesterday afternoon off camera I took care of all the prep work. So everything here is nice and sanded and cleaned. The fairing compound is all cured so let's go ahead and get this trimmed. It does seem a little bit funny to drill a hole considering the fact that I've just finished filling in the old holes, but I need some way of securing this, of holding on to it while I'm test fitting it. I've planned it out so that this gauge gets mounted on top of this tiny hole, so I don't need to fill that hole later on. I've left a little bit more of the old flange on this than the one from yesterday. That's just going to mean more surface area for gluing and also more surface area for tying this into the boat. Yep, this is going to look pretty awesome with all of the edges here rounded over and it being all nice and smooth. You know ye old timey saying, if you liked it you should have put a bevel on it and that is exactly what I've done here. That way I know the fiberglass I'm gonna lay up here is gonna get a nice strong bond and this will, well, last forever. All the surfaces are prepped and I've test fitted everything one last final time but before I mount this there is one little thing I want to take care of on the outside of the cockpit combing. That hole is to let air into the engine compartment and I figured it was easier to take care of it now rather than once I've got everything sealed up. I've mixed up a little bit of thickened epoxy, I've wetted up all of the surfaces, so I think we're ready to get this thing adhered in place. Thank you. 
I've cleaned up as much of the squeeze out as I could just to make life a little easier for myself tomorrow. And it looks like this thing is nice and flush with the cockpit. Theoretically, I could go ahead and lay up glass on the back of this now and be done with it. But I don't want to risk it. I don't want to risk this thing moving on me and being crooked for the rest of the time I own Athena. So I'm just going to leave it like that for now. While we're waiting for that epoxy to cure, why don't we go ahead and take a look at the moisture levels in the hull. I think I promised you guys that last weekend, but then never got around to it. If you're new to my channel, the reason I care about the moisture levels in the hull is because I need the hull to dry out before I can finish an osmosis treatment. When I purchased Athena, I did so knowing that she had a bit of osmosis. If you go back and check out the videos from last summer, there are a bunch of videos where I'm drying out large sections of the hull with a homemade hotback type setup, which consists of a silicon heating mat and a vacuum pump. This is one of the very first areas of the hull I dried out using that setup. And when I was first starting out, I noted the moisture readings on the side of the hull just to make sure that it was actually working. But let's go ahead and check those readings after a long, cold, wet winter spent outside. For this, although you're not supposed to, I use the top of the two scales here. And as you can see, it's nine and it used to be 13. 13, that was the moisture reading for this area prior to the treatment. I sadly don't have a measurement for immediately after the treatment, but I do have something that's, well, even better. On the starboard side of the hull, I've been tracking 25 areas. I've got last year's measurements right here. So let me go ahead and grab a fresh set of data and we can take a look. Last fall, the average was 48.2 and the readings I've just grabbed, the average is 48.3. 48.3 is on the comparative scale, the bottom scale, and not the top scale where I got the number 13 from on the port side of the boat. Now, 48.3 is a little bit of a high number, but the high number is easily explained. Five of my data points are located on the keel where the iron ballast is gonna mess with those measurements. I've seen those stay almost constant over the last two years, and I'm guessing that is because of the iron ballast. So some of the readings are affected by the keel. Others are affected by other stuff inside the boat. For instance, wet plywood. Right here, I've got one of the wet structural members I need to take a look at later this year. But if we take a look at the moisture readings, it's dry, wet, and dry. Now that's not because the laminate itself is wet. That is because of that wet plywood on the inside of the boat. If we disregard the high moisture readings that I can explain because of stuff inside of the boat, well then the hull is dry and ready for me to proceed to the next step in the osmosis treatment. Enough yammering on. Thanks to the uncomfortable high temperatures here in the shed, the epoxy is not fully cured, but it is cured enough that I feel comfortable laying up glass on the inside of this. I've cut a bit of glass and uh, this I am going to wet out here in the cockpit because it's so cramped in the aft cabin. I don't think I'm gonna be exaggerating too much if I say that it is mildly uncomfortable in here. It is insanely warm and quite cramped and dirty, but at least I am done laying up glass on all the edges I can reach from this end. That only leaves the tiny little area I need to get at from the cockpit locker. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't really promise to be super comfortable either. <sighs> I'm in for Hilda Satan else. Oh. Whoa. That was unpleasant, but at least it's done. There are still a few air bubbles I need to remove, but at least the fiberglass is on there. By the end of today, this is gonna be a permanent part of Athena. And that's awesome because that means no more leaks. In a couple of hours, I should be able to come back and remove that piece of wood I used to temporarily secure everything. But until then, I think I'm going to go find something cold to drink. It is a few hours later and I'm hopeful this will now be able to carry its own weight. Yeah, doesn't look like it's going anywhere. Now I can get busy beautifying this thing because right now it is pretty ugly. But uh, 
Let's start with a light sanding. Good morning guys. The fairing compound I applied yesterday should now be fully cured. I'm sure I'm gonna have to go over this with fairing compound more than once, but I wanted to give you guys a rough idea of what this is going to look like when it's done. So let's go ahead and get these rounded over. It still looks a little rough around the edges, but I think it's coming along nicely. A little bit more fairing compound, some sanding, and of course some paint, and this will look like it was part of the mold. I certainly think this looks a lot better than this. I am really excited about painting the boat, especially the cockpit, because I think it's gonna look a lot cleaner than it used to. If everything goes according to plan, I'm gonna get started painting the boat in late August. Until then, I'm gonna switch focus and start working on the hull below the waterline. To help me with the tedious task of laying up fiberglass on the hull, I've chosen to import some help from the US in the form of my girlfriend, Ava, and she arrives in Denmark in three days. That means I better get busy cleaning Obelix, and in fact, I've reserved the rest of today to do just that. Now, when Ava gets here, we're gonna spend two weeks exploring Scandinavia, so Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and then we're gonna come back to Skiva and work on Athena and do little day excursions. Now, next weekend's video is already pre-recorded, so be sure to tune in on Sunday, but after that, there might be a gap, just a single weekend where I'm not gonna be able to upload a video. Speaking of my lovely girlfriend, when we get back to Skiva, we're going to do a Patreon live stream right here from Aborda Athena, and that should also be a lot of fun. But like I said, I better head over to Obelix and get busy cleaning. So that is going to be it for this video. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.